Hey everyone, Asiaka Cosplay here. I've been getting a lot of questions on how I made my Mew tail, so I decided to put together a tutorial video to show you how I made it. Uh, it is an, this is an older cosplay, it's retired, so there's a lot of dirt smudges on it, but we can still see how I put it together. Um, it is entirely freestanding, no string holding it up, just the wire inside. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual belt I made here. Um, I made a really tight belt to support the wire of the tail. So I used four pieces of canvas and quilted them together by stitching rows quarter inch apart all throughout. And then I bound the edges with bias tape and added these big old hooks to keep it on. And there's some steel boning in here to keep it really secure, really stable, just so that the belt wouldn't tend to fold back on itself. Um, and then here we have the loop where I stitched the wire down and I used dental floss to do that because it's basically like waxed thread. So it's like extra strong thread. I highly recommend you use dental floss for all of your cosplay. All right, let's start with the materials you're gonna need. Uh, first off, you're gonna need some wire. 12 gauge is what I used, but my tail was pretty long, so you could probably get away with 14 or even 16 gauge, depending on the length of the tail. Remember, the lower the number, the thicker the wire is. And this you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. Um, then, you're gonna need a little bit of boning. So I used steel boning, but that's kind of hard to come by and it's hard to cut down in size. So an alternative, you might be able to use um, spiral steel. It's a lot more common. Uh, you do still need some wire cutters to fit, to size that, but a lot easier to work with than steel boning. You're gonna need some hooks. You've got regular hooks here or skirt hooks. Any pretty heavy duty sized hook. You'll need some polyester fiber fill to stuff your tail, depending on what material you use. You're gonna need some bias tape, canvas, or that sort of material that you use for like shoulder bags, backpacks, anything for a heavy duty strap. Canvas or that, either one will do. Okay, so step one, you're gonna need to measure yourself at the exact point where you want the belt to sit. So for me, it was pretty low. It was right around down here. But depending on, you know, what sort of tail you, how you want it to look, you could maybe do it higher. But just measure in the exact place where you want the belt to sit for the tail to come off of. Okay, so now that you know how long you need the belt to be, because you measured around exactly where you want that to sit, you're gonna cut out your canvas or cut your length of strap, whichever material you choose to use. I don't really have a recommendation, it's just whatever's easier for you. So again, I cut four layers of canvas, just all in the same piece, and these are shorter than the belt would actually be, just for ease of demonstration. And then I quilted them together by stitching one quarter inch length all the way down, stitching um, rows all the way down one quarter inch apart. And that just really uh, firms it up and keeps the materials together. And then in between, I made a little channel where I could put the steel boning. Okay, so right here you can see the quarter inch apart um, quilting stitches and then the channel right here. I didn't stitch the quilting stitches through. I just left a space open so that I could put the steel boning in between and it's, it's really tight because otherwise the bony doesn't do its job. So you gotta get it as close as you can and make it pretty stiff. I did, I think, four little pieces on each side where it would kind of rest on my hips because I thought that part was the needed the most stability because that's where you're moving. That's where you're gonna get the most movement as you're walking and that's where you need the most stability. Now again, if you're gonna go with steel boning, you need a belt sander to um, 
round out that edge like on this side and then you dip it in primer just to keep it from being sharp and from cutting right through the fabric and from cutting you. So that's kind of a lot of work if you don't have access to a belt sander. Um, again, I suggest you could use spiral steel boning. Um, any other form of boning, like rigidly, might be a little weak. You could also try it without any boning. Depending on um, the tail, it might work without any boning at all. So there is one option to go without it. I just did it for extra stability and safety since my new tail is so long. So some tips about the belt and getting it to fit really snugly around your hips um, because it has to in order to support the weight of the wire. We're not perfect cylinders, so if you just put a straight piece of fabric around your hips, it's, it's not gonna hug very well. I put a little dart on each side right over my hip so that it fit me better, it was more shaped to my body. So just, just a little triangle. Basically, you would sew something like this. Just. Okay, so here I've sewn along that line that I just drew, creating a little dart. And you're gonna want one of these over each hip, like I mentioned before, so that you get a bit of an angle. And again, now you've made the top of the belt a little bit smaller than the bottom so that that just fits around your hips a lot more comfortably and a lot more, a lot better shaped to an actual body. So it's not just a cylinder. So after that, then I just finish off the edges by putting bias tape on the edge to finish it and keep it clean keep the edges from fraying. Okay, so now let's talk about the wire. Um, you're gonna wanna measure how long you want your tail to be. You could probably just put a tape measure at uh, your backside and then hold it out in a curve shape and figure out exactly how long you'd like it to be. Or you can play with the wire to figure it out. This is 12 gauge, which is pretty tough to manipulate, but you can manipulate it with your hands. It's just kind of slow going. Now it's nice since it already usually comes in a, a ring, a pile, then you already have a nice soft curve. You just need to kind of bend it out a bit. Now be careful, especially if you're using um, not as heavy of a gauge wire, if you're using like 16 gauge, you can definitely cut yourself on the ends. It's quite sharp. So you will need wire cutters and um, watch those ends. I've got some scrapes on my legs when I was working with this. Um, just some gentle manipulation. You can use needle nose pliers as well. It doesn't really matter if you scratch up the wire because it's going to be entirely obscured. Um, but I preferred using my hands to just kind of gently work the shape out. Now at the very end of the wire where it's gonna attach to the belt, I made a really tight loop. And you might break your nail doing this. Like I said, just be really careful of those ends. They're pretty sharp. And again, you will need some pretty heavy duty wire cutters to um, get the length that you want, especially if you buy that. Um, 150 foot ream from um, Home Depot. So anyway, just make a nice loop, preferably a fatter loop than this. And this is gonna be what you attach to the end of the belt. Now as to where you put the hooks, um, you don't want to put them right at the very back along the center of your backside because that's where the end of the wire needs to be attached. I put them on one side of my hip um, so that it's not gonna interfere with where I place the wire. Okay, so then once again, dental floss I used to hand sew these hooks in place. Um, I used 
a regular hook, not a skirt hook, because it's it's pretty thick fabric, so it can get hard to do a skirt hook. But skirt hooks are a lot less bulky, so depending on the size of your tail, if it's pretty small, you could pretty, maybe get away with skirt hooks. And like I said, they're flatter, they're thinner, they leave, they're gonna show less, but these are better for something that's gonna bear a lot of weight and need to be really, really sturdy. So attaching the wire, pretty simple. Once you've got the shape that you want for the tail, and again, this is wire. You can manipulate it. If you decide for some photos that you wanna try and do a different shape at some point, you can. So you can always be um, changing that shape up, but do keep in mind, once you get little kinks in the wire like this, they're pretty much impossible to get out. So you gotta be really careful to avoid getting these little small kinks. Try and keep the overall shape smooth and wide and just work with the original um, ring that you get when you buy the wire. Just kind of widen that out. So for attaching the loop to the belt, as I mentioned before, we're gonna be using dental floss. Why dental floss? Well, waxed thread is what we use when we need something that's extra strong. Regular thread might break if it's meant to work under, um, to support something really heavy. But when we want something to be really, really strong and unbreakable, we'll run some wax over thread. Dental floss is essentially already wax thread, and it's pretty cheap, so you might as well save yourself the effort of buying wax and going over your thread with it. Go ahead and double it up. And just laying it right at the place where your center back will be. And you're gonna to wanna to just maybe coat the edge of that wire with um, some uh, hot glue or some primer, just something to smooth it so it's not gonna hurt you or poke through your fabric. So just basically now you're just gonna go around the wire really, really tightly with the dental floss. And be pretty generous with these stitches. No more than a quarter inch apart between these stitches, I think, if not less. And again, this will depend on how big the tail is that you're attaching. So now you need to cut out your outer shell of your tail because the wire is the inside and then the outside is uh, the fur, whatever material you choose to make your tail out of, which will then be stuffed with fiber fill. So, why are you shaped, you know, maybe something like this, but that's not how you're gonna cut out the pattern piece. You simply need to measure the full length of this curve using your tape measure, and then you're just gonna draw a straight version of that. So as, if this was, I don't know, 30 inches long, you're just gonna draw a straight, and this would be, you know, more like my new tail shape, 30 inches. And you're just gonna cut out two of them. If you're doing more like a cattail, then you know, it would just be probably like this. Uh, wolf tail, you know, maybe more like this, but you're not gonna draw in the curve. The wire gives it the curve. The pe fabric piece is gonna be straight and once you put it on the wire, then it will be curved. So, Again, measure out the full length of your wire that you shaped. And you can also put a loop at the other end of the wire too. Loop that, um, loop the end of the wire on both ends so that it's not gonna poke through anything. And it can kind of help give the end of your tail just a little bit of extra volume. 
Um, and then draw a straightened version of your tail. If it was perfectly straight on your fabric, add your seam allowance, and you're gonna cut out two and stitch them together. Then turn it inside out so you have a casing to put around your wire. Okay, so I made these shorts specifically for my new cosplay. Um, because of that, I made them and the, the tail and the belt all in one. They don't come apart. So this tail is just permanently stuck on these shorts with the belt attached. And if you're interested in trying to make the tail and belt detachable from your pieces of fabric, that's gonna be another challenge. So let me know if you think of a way to do that. But this is all one piece. So I just cut a hole right here in the back side of my shorts and slip the wire through. So you've got the other end of the belt right here. Now, stuffing the tail. If your tail is really long and thin like mine, it's gonna be an extra challenge. So remember you have two pieces of fur or whatever fabric, um, identical pieces you cut out and you sew together along one side all the way through and then maybe leave the other side open if it's a rather thin or long tail because you won't be able to get the fiber fill all the way to the end if you sew both sides. I apologize again for how dirty this tail is. It's very, very old. Um, so you might sew down to about here so that you can stuff the tail with your fiber fill and then um, you can sew up the other side, but you need to leave little gaps in your stitching. And if, if it's this thin of a tail, you're gonna need to leave those gaps pretty frequently all throughout one side, just little holes so that you can poke the fiber fill in and kind of stuff and then hand sew up that little gap, move on to the next gap, stuff and then hand sew up that little gap. And that's how I did this whole tail. If you have a thicker tail or a shorter tail, you might not need to do that. You might be able to just sew the whole thing and then easily stuff it. This was a particular challenge just because of its length and how narrow it is. Okay, so last of all, you're just gonna attach the end of the fabric to your shorts, pants, uh, whatever item of clothing it is um, to cover up that hole and to create a seamless transition from the fabric to the tail. You just need to fold the edges under and then do a very neat little ladder stitch all the way around to make it visible so you don't see the stitching. And so it looks natural, so it looks real. Mine doesn't so much since it's very, very old. Okay, so that's it. You've now learned how to make a floating tail, a tail that can support itself and generally doesn't move around too much, looks natural, looks real. Um, please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to try and answer those as clearly as I can. Once again, I apologize for my cosplay being very beaten up and dirty. Uh, it's been around about 10 years, so it's really taken a beating from a lot of comments. Um, you can follow me on Facebook at Aziaka Cosplay. Instagram at Asiaka underscore cosplay. And feel free to message me here on YouTube as well, although Facebook and Instagram are my primary um, sites that I use. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Good luck with your cosplay. Next time we'll go over how I made my Severmon wings.